everybody thinks the US dollar is still as good as gold, and it hasn't been since 1971. This is the uh, world monetary systems. Uh, from 1873, when Germany went on the classical gold standard, where each unit of currency is backed up by an equivalent amount of gold in the treasury. In the United States, $20 bill, $20 gold piece in the vaults. Go into any bank, slap down your currency, which was a receipt for money, a claim check on money, ask for your money, gold and silver, and they would give it to you. So this shows, this is currency, this is money. Otherwise, there was no reason for any government to store gold in their vaults and then print this currency that was backed by gold. This is what gives confidence in that, and it gives governments the ability to start this scam in the first place, where they print these receipts for gold, and then they can print more of them than, than gold that exists. And that happened when we got to World War I, and all the combatants stopped redemption rights. You could no longer go in the bank and, and trade your pounds, lira, marks, francs, no longer redeemable in gold, and they lit up the printing presses and started printing like crazy. Then between the wars, they went on something called the gold exchange standard, where currencies would be backed partially by gold. So in the United States, under the Federal Reserve Act of 1913, we could, the Federal Reserve was allowed to put uh, $50 worth of claim checks on gold, currency in circulation, backed up by only $20 worth of gold. So it was a 40% reserve ratio for every $20 gold piece in the vault, they could uh, put $50 in circulation. We're the dollars of the nation on parade. We're the biggest batch of dollars ever made. Oh, we used to march by millions, but now we march by billions. And maybe we'll be trillions for your day. We're the dollars uh, then we get to 1944. Now, during both wars, Europe paid the U.S. with gold. Uh, during World War I, the U.S. didn't get into the war until the very end of it. We didn't really have troops on the ground here in any quantity until the last six months of the war. So for the first four years or so, we're selling you all of, you know, you take all of your young men off of the farms and turn them into soldiers. You take your factories that make toasters and they start making machine guns. Your factories that made cars are now building tanks. And uh, so you turn your economy toward war, and all of your consumer goods and your grains had to be imported from the United States, uh, and you paid us with gold. Uh, then in World War II, Hitler starts saber-rattling in 1936, uh, annexes Austria in 38, and invades Poland in 39. Uh, Pearl Harbor wasn't until the end of 1941. We didn't have troops on the ground until, I believe, August of 42. So again, there's like six years where you're paying us with your gold and we're selling you stuff. This is where Americans have this myth that war is good for the economy. War is good for the economy if you're not in it and you're selling them the tools of the trade. Yes, America's national income gets bigger and bigger. In 1943, it was $142 billion. That was double the 1939 figure, triple the figure for 1933. But by the end of World War II, the U.S. had two-thirds of all the world's monetary gold, the central bank gold, and the rest of the world had to share the other third, and Europe had none. So the world monetary system was no longer going to work. It would collapse. But we had made all these loans of dollars to Europe, so Europe was flooded with dollars. And so representatives from around the world met at Bretton Woods, New Hampshire in 1944. They came up with a new world monetary system called the Bretton Woods system, where every currency on the planet, with the exception of just a few, they would be backed by the U.S. dollar, and the U.S. dollar would then be backed by gold at $35 per ounce. This gave confidence to all currencies. Uh, so this gave the world stability, and it pegged all the world's currencies to each other through the dollar to gold. So there was no such thing as the Forex. Currencies didn't float. Uh, the exchange rates were fixed year after year and this helped to make world trade boom. Then, the dollar standard starts because we kept on printing dollars. Under the Bretton Woods system, there, there was no reserve ratio established where the U.S. actually had to have a certain amount of gold for how many dollars we created. So, we had done a bunch of deficit spending for Korea, for Vietnam, for Johnson's Great Society, and expanded the currency supply, the amount of uh, paper dollars in circulation, and exported them all over the world. 
And then in the 60s, Charles de Gaulle, president of France, realizes that we don't have the gold to back up the dollars. Le fait que beaucoup d'États acceptent par principe des dollars au même titre que de l'or entraîne les Américains à s'endetter et à s'endetter gratuitement vis-à-vis de l'étranger, car ce qu'ils lui doivent, ils le lui payent avec des dollars qu'il ne tient qu'à eux d'émettre. Nous estimons nécessaire que les échanges internationaux soient établis comme c'était le cas avant les grands malheurs du monde sur une base monétaire indiscutable et qui ne porte la marque d'aucun pays en particulier. Quelle base En vérité, on ne voit pas qu'il puisse y avoir réellement de critères, des talons autres que l'or. And he uh, starts asking, France asks, asks for their gold, he trades in, in the dollars, and at that point, other countries saw this and start jumping on board, and uh, the U.S. lost 50% of its gold from 1959 to 1971, but we still had, in 71, about 12 times more dollars that we had created than there was gold. And this run on the bank, basically, the U.S. now being the bank, this is a giant worldwide bank run, because the U.S., for the second time, had committed a fraud and created more receipts for gold than there was gold. It's, it's that simple. And then finally, the markets sort of sensed this, and Nixon was forced to take us off the gold standard because if he had paid out gold until it got to zero, once we couldn't pay on some of those dollars, the entire worldwide monetary system would have collapsed. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar in the gold or other reserve assets, except in amounts and conditions determined to be in the interest of monetary stability and in the best interest of the United States. In full cooperation with the International Monetary Fund and those who trade with us, we will press for the necessary reforms to set up an urgently needed new international monetary system. And on August 15, 1971, all the world's currencies became fiat currency. I don't know why the rest of the world didn't rush out and hang him, <laughs> but, but they didn't. They just all went along with this. To our friends abroad, I give this assurance. The United States has always been and will continue to be a forward-looking and trustworthy trading partner. There have been thousands upon thousands upon thousands of fiat currencies throughout history, and there isn't one that survived. It is a 100% failure rate. And we started this experiment when, where all the world's currencies would be fiat currencies simultaneously in 1971. But what we have here, 30 to 40 years, different monetary system, 30 years, 28 years, 39 years plus, what's next? The world is going to have a new monetary system in this decade that we're in. We're going to experience this huge deflationary crash around the world. The world will probably end up on some sort of new monetary system, probably after governments try and print their way out of this and cause hyperinflations of of all the currencies, and people will just lose confidence in currency. And what do they always go back to throughout history? Time after time, for the last 5,000 years, actually, they always go back to gold and silver. In a world of floating currencies, and that's what all national currencies are today, they bob up and down relative to each other, but they're all sinking relative to gold. That includes the dollar as well as the euro and the British pound and all the others. They're going to continue to lose value, continue to lose purchasing power. Personally, I don't think there's any way of avoiding what is coming. There's no way to fix it right now. There's only uh, a way to either let it wipe you out or to benefit from it.